Hi, I'm Jerry from the Terechi Group at Princeton, and this is the talk I gave at the 2021 APS March meeting. I'll be sharing some work from our recent archive paper, investigating a care network preprocessor for quantum measurement. I'll start with our proposal for a care oscillator implementation of reservoir computing, and then quickly introduce the measurement task we apply this device to, which is noisy multi-qubit dispersive readout. I'll show that even small random networks perform surprisingly well at this task. We can understand the success through a physically motivated analysis of the care network dynamics and its properties. This in turn can inform reservoir design and it's this importance of understanding reservoir dynamics more generally in reservoir computing that I hope you take from my talk. My colleagues have also presented more of our work on this care network reservoir computer in the fully quantum regime, which I encourage you to check out. Reservoir computing is a computational framework for processing time dependent data where we compute some desired function f of an input signal or its history. This is done by feeding the signal into a reservoir, which we take to be a physical dynamical system. Some successful recent platforms are FPGAs, photonic networks, and superconducting circuits. Here we're going to use a lattice of care oscillators. Regardless of the physical manifestation, the dynamics of the reservoir map this signal into the reservoir's high dimensional phase space. Each reservoir degree of freedom is some nonlinear function of the input and its history. The computational output is then simply formed by taking a linear combination of these degrees of freedom. Training this output layer as depicted here is a computationally inexpensive convex optimization. And importantly, the internal parameters and consequent dynamics of this reservoir are not optimized for any specific task. Despite this, reservoirs such as the care network we consider here, which satisfy this simple set of properties, can be shown to produce arbitrary functions of an input provided they have a sufficient number of degrees of freedom. So here's a diagram of our proposed quantum measurement processor. We're gonna interrogate the quantum system we wish to measure and the resultant raw noisy measurement current couples directly into the reservoir computer. The care network will then evolve under this input current as depicted here. And the output formed from a linear combination of these oscillator quadratures is the probability that this measured quantum system was in each of its possible states. In this work, I'll describe networks of two to five oscillators, which can be implemented in current superconducting or optical systems used for quantum computing, and thus the same platform as this quantum system we're measuring. Uh, this is a much smaller reservoir than is typically considered, but it is sufficient for a non-trivial measurement task. We envision this device as a low latency processor to minimize overhead and operate in the fridge and on the computational edge. Here is the Hamiltonian for the care oscillator network that forms a reservoir computer, where each oscillator has a quartic nonlinearity and linear coupling to the input drive. The oscillators decay and are continuously measured, and the system can generally be described by a stochastic master equation. You studied the fully quantum system before, but here we're gonna consider the case where the drive is sufficiently strong and the nonlinearity is weak, that we have a large number of photons in the reservoir. In this case, we can decouple operator moments and describe the system with a coupled set of semi-classical equations for the oscillator amplitudes beta. I've written this in the more familiar reservoir computing form in terms of a scaled nonlinearity coupling matrix and input drive. We're gonna consider networks with random structure, which are described then in terms of a set of hyperparameters which determine their properties. Uh, the, in addition to the number of nodes and the reservoir time scale, we also have uh, input strength and average nonlinearity and a spectral radius of the coupling matrix. We're going to read out one out of the two orthogonal quadratures for each care oscillator. And this measurement angle is, can be trained as part of the standard linear output layer for reservoir computing. Training is done by inputting labeled signals into the reservoir computer, recording the resultant output, and then minimizing a cost function with respect to this output and these target labels. The quantum system we will use to evaluate this reservoir processor is a multi-qubit joint dispersive readout setup, where we have a pair of qubits coupled to a common readout cavity, either through a James Cummings or dispersive interaction. When the cavity is driven, its evolution will then depend on the initial qubit state, which can then be inferred from a homodyne measurement of the cavity. However, qubit crosstalk and decay lead to the loss of initial state information, particularly in the James Cummings regime. On the right, I show individual field quadrature evolution during measurement and the average decay of the initial qubit amplitude uh, for these parameters under both the James Cummings and a non-ideal dispersive interaction model. 
in both cases, you see that the initial qubit state is quickly lost as the measurement proceeds. The input to the reservoir computer is going to be these cavity measurement currents, uh, which are dominated by noise, as you can see in this plot on the right, where we can't distinguish these two traces by eye. The target for the reservoir computer is the initial state label, and these measurement signals are typically processed uh, in a, through linear filtering in a conventional setup. We're going to compare the reservoir computer then to an optimal match filter whose kernel we can construct from the same measurement signals we're going to use to train the reservoir computer. In this conventional setup, classification is done after filtering through a nonlinear distance calculation, which amounts to assigning to each filtered signal, such as this one here, to a bin, as shown in this plot. All right, so how does this reservoir computer work? Well, here is a measurement current input into a five node care network. The evolution of the measured quadratures in response to this noisy signal is shown in the center plot, and the output of our reservoir computer, shown to the right, quickly converges to the correct initial state label. To be more quantitative, we can evaluate the performance of this reservoir computer on a set of 1,200 test measurements, where here I plot the fraction of signals classified correctly as a function of measurement time for both initial uh, readout systems. It's important to note that in both the dispersive and James Cummings models, crosstalk and decay impose a ceiling on classification accuracy, which decays with time. So this peak accuracy, which I'll refer to as the fidelity, occurs as an intermediate measurement time for both the reservoir computer and the filters. You can see that the performance of the highlighted reservoir computer in blue compares quite favorably with filtering. You may have noticed on the previous slide that the reservoir computer was trained with far fewer signals than the match filter. And to highlight this, here we plot the classification fidelity as a function of training set size Q for 10 different random reservoirs in various colors. You see that for a dispersive measurement, just one training signal for each initial qubit state is sufficient for accurate classification on the 1200 measurement test set. Even for the James Cummings system, on the order of 10 signals for each state gives effectively optimal performance. In contrast, the match filter in red only converges to the fidelity of the reservoir computer with the order of a thousand training signals. This difference is important because quantum experiments and in particular quantum computers need to be recalibrated regularly. This can be accomplished with far less time and hopefully less quantum resources using an RC-based measurement chain. This advantage is a result of the ease of separating states in the two k-dimensional reservoir phase space, which we can understand better by looking at the reservoir dynamics directly. So to do that, let's look at the measured subspace of a two oscillator network, which is something that can both still surprisingly accomplish this measurement task and that humans can sensibly visualize being in two dimensions. So here I'm plotting the final measured quadratures x1 and x2 for each input signal indicating the different initial qubit states in different colors. And we see that each of these different classes of inputs generates reservoir states that fall into largely separate distributions. Training amounts to learning these hyperplanes, or in this case, lines that separate these distributions. I've also plotted four individual reservoir trajectories in, very, in black. And even though I've not labeled them, it's clear which initial qubit states they correspond to. This is actually the key to the rapid training shown earlier. These trajectories are information dense with each time point equivalent to a new sample in training. And so these separating hyperplanes can be drawn reasonably well with just a few trajectories. We see that the inputs with underlying signals of the same class generate reservoir states that are similar despite the dominant noise component of the measurement current. This is a strong demonstration of the separation and approximation properties of reservoir computing. Uh, the final reservoir state also depends on the input history, which means this computation is robust to qubit decay since it will take a finite amount of time to displace the reservoir state from this quadrant that it is settled in, indicating that the network has fading memory. Lastly, I would like to highlight the importance of nonlinearity. On the left, I've shown results for an identical network, except that I have set its nonlinearity to zero. We see that the final reservoir states still separate due to the different mean input signal amplitudes, but they all fall along roughly the same line. Since this reservoir is purely linear, the two measured quadratures are not two linearly independent functions of this input, and classification using this linear reservoir is equivalent to classifying the filtered measurement current directly, and in particular requires a nonlinear distance calculation. The nonlinearity, in contrast, allows the reservoir to use its dimensionality, producing output quadratures, which are linearly independent functions of the input. 
This then allows for classification with a linear output layer, and we've moved the nonlinear processing into the reservoir as desired. Finally, we can use our understanding of the care network dynamics to inform reservoir design through hyperparameter selection. So on this top plot, I show the variation in fidelity amongst 10 random reservoirs with both node number and reservoir time scale. It's important that this reservoir time scale be roughly matched to that of the input signal kappa so that the reservoir responds to the input signal instead of the far faster noise on top of it. This is why the performance starts to fall off at faster reservoir time scales. We can also see that for the two node uh, networks, there is a significant amount of variation in performance, but that's not seen for the larger reservoirs. As reservoir size grows, this variation in performance decreases because the odds of the reservoir containing an effective subspace where classes separate nicely, like I showed on the previous slides, will increase. In the lower plot, I show the performance as one varies both the nonlinearity and the input strength. The effective nonlinearity of the care network is actually a product of these quantities. And so it's important that this effective nonlinearity be large enough to use the dimensionality of the reservoir, but be also small enough that the reservoir is able to settle into unique attractors over the measurement time scale and in the presence of noise. To summarize, I introduced a hardware efficient analog processor for quantum measurement based on a care network reservoir computer. I show that this reservoir computer enabled high fidelity and rapid calibration of non-ideal measurement signals and developed an understanding of these results and how to design reservoir computers by exploring the dynamics of the reservoir itself. This care network approach can be applied to other tasks, uh, such as we've considered in our other works. And thank you for listening.